Hello people YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Uh, what I'm going to do today is, is I've been playing a lot of the golf club and we need to just turn this menu music down. Uh, and basically what I did about probably about a week ago was basically work out all the yardages of the clubs and to do that I needed a test range so I made up my own club yardage test range now I've got it on the golf course designer so I'm just going to open that up <coughs> and show you what it's like a wee bit of a graphical glitch there now basically what I wanted to do was was find out I mean the carry distance in the game is pretty much accurate there might sometimes I might be just you know a yard or two out but it's not much so it's pretty much as is. But really, w what I wanted to do was find out the. I thought I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll show you I'll show you my test range first, to, just to show you what I've kind of done. So here we go. Here it is. Um, but basically, what I've got here is I can just get a nice wee angle. Hole number one, right? Hole number one is basically my uh, driving fairway test hit area. So that's all fairway with a big green at the top, which you can use. But basically, it's just to test out the the distance of clubs, how far it goes, and how much it rolls out stopping distance. Now the wind's one mile per hour in my face. It's basically like a a default setting. So you're basically getting the true yardage of a, of a club. Um, second hole is all uh, green. So we can hit like shots onto this green. And then basically work out the same thing with, with a ball landing on the green. It's uh, it's carry, <coughs> excuse me, it's carry distance and it's eventual stopping distance. I've also got a bunker there where you can test out bunker shots. The same same kind of idea. Um, length or carry distance and rollout distance. And then here I've got a par three holes. Now I've done. Oh, have I got it? One, two, three, four, five, five holes that are one hundred and seventy yards. Okay, there's some that are one six nine, but it's not much difference. And I think. I'm trying to think of the elevation change that I did from the tee box. It's like, is it 10 foot, 20 foot, 25, 30 or 40? Is that 50 or 60? So I've done like various uh, elevation changes. And then here I've done the opposite, although these are not, like, it was harder to get a distance. Nikon, what are you doing? Nikon! about the wallpaper. Um, I've, this here I've done elevation change in the green. So there's various... Nikon! Nikon! Get away from there. It's really doing my head in. Uh, these holes I've done the opposite. So I've done like elevation change. So you can actually hit an iron and work out the elevation and in a way just sort of gauge if you're if your skills at getting, like right, if it's if it's twenty one foot up, you convert that into it'd be like seven yards onto your up or down. Uh, so it'll be seven yards of a change, plus or minus. So I was actually thinking of publishing this course, but it's an easy course to make up in your course design. What I might do is publish it, but I might do different settings. Now this is where we we, we kind of get into it. If we escape this. And we go to layout, right? We can actually go to greens and fairways. So, for instance, if we're testing out uh, cobwebs on a certain firmness of, of fairway and or green, we go up here and we can go to firmness and we can make that soft or firm. So, we can basically take it to extreme. I do like two settings all the way down to soft, all the way up to firm. And then that setting I've got just now, which is like halfway in between. And basically, you can do that with greens. You go to green, and you can go to oh, wrong button. 
and you can go to firmness and also green speed. Uh, so there you can see we've got it on firm. I can just take that back. So I, I can change that to whatever. So say I was going to play a course uh, and it was like firm, firm uh, greens and then it was open. Get that back. It was firm greens and it was also um, the speed, and the speed was was fast. So I can actually dial that in there, and then I can actually go to uh, let's see, escape again, escape, and I can go to oh, what's aim, aim for there, play hole. And then what it does is I've got like a big massive driving range as you can see here and that's basically just all green and it's it's fairly flat there's not much uh, change there's no elevation change in it so this is where you can test um, like the stopping distance of clubs so let's I've actually made some uh, here we go club yards chart green I've got soft and firm marks now the medium set in between should roughly be somewhere in between that. So say I want to hit a 9 iron. Now I've got this down here as being 130 carry and then 140 rollout distance. So let's go, let's just test this. It is a 9 iron. It says 132 carry but I've discovered that it's just a, maybe just a little bit less. Right, there we go, shots away. Let's look for the, the number. It should, it should land. 130, you see that? And then it should roll out. 140. So I can actually predict the yardages and I've written down almost like a real golfer would. Because you know, if you think a golfer a golfer will, will hit a ball to a, a club to a certain number. You know, your average Joe golfer would say, Oh that looks like a, a seven iron and he's kinda hitting in a, a guesstimate. That is a, a seven iron distance where a pro golfer. I mean, that's how when you, when you hear pro golfers talk and the caddy and that kind of work together and they get a yardage. I mean, these guys are precise, these guys can hit, a, they know what, what distance that club goes. Whereas average Joe, it's it's an average distance, it's a, it's a kind of guess. But a professional is actually going to hit it like precise. So let's try that nine iron again. Now we're hitting it from, from the green, we're probably going to get the same shot. It should go 130 and it should roll out to 140 yards. Watch the number at the bottom there. See, 130. And then it rolls out. Just shy of 140. So basically I know how far that, that club's going to go. Uh, I think the carry distance for a 9 iron is 132. Yeah. So it's, it's like two yards out, which is no biggie, but um, but that's fir firm greens and fast greens. Now you can change it. I mean, I don't know whether, I, I was actually going to do the whole thing with firm, maybe firm greens, and then put the different speeds, and then put, you know, um, soft firmness in the speed, and I was going to do it for the whole thing. Um, but I kind of want to try. It's a lot of data. I might, I might go back and redo it and write it all out a wee bit better. But I, I basically, so for instance, I'll go to, I'll go to a four iron, right? Now in my yardage book, four iron is going to be one nine four carry and two hundred and twenty two yards rollout distance. So let's give this a hit. All hundred percent shots. So we're looking for one nine four. Now 193, maybe just a yard short. Now let's see the rollout distance. Okay, it landed actually a bit short, 220. So my 194, 222 was, was just out. I was a yard short in the carry and two yards short in the rollout. But that's, I mean, that's not bad. So I can predict just about every shot. Let's go for. Let's go for a wall wedge and it says 75, I've got 74, 78. 
at 100% shot and 74 78 so basically I've, I've predicted the yardage of all those shots um, so that was one thing that, that, that I wanted to do I'm going to exit I'm going to exit here and then go back to the TV you can turn around but because you're, you're going towards the hole it kind of sets you off looking at the hole so let's go back let's edit Let's go back there to the tee box and then go back, play, play hole. So that's us back in the tee. Now there's a bunker range there that I could put a ball in and test the uh, bunker shots. But so that that's all the, the, the main normal hits I've got with for instance a driver if say for instance if he did hit it in the green, it would land two six four, I think the car is two six five. And it would roll out to 316 yards. Now remember, you've got your obviously you've got your wind and your elevation change, which is going to affect the yardage. But that's stuff that you're you're going to have to add on. So, say you had a shot that was, uh, say for instance, if it was on a certain firmness and also speed. So you could gauge if you want to hit something that's 172 yards, then. A seven iron would, would carry one five seven and then land roll out distance would be one seven two on perfectly flat. But obviously greens are, some might be uphill in the landing zone, some might be downhill. Um and this is where the kind of difficulty I, I played I played the weekend and I played terrible. I played TPC Sawgrass and my rounds were just quite pathetic. So Monday morning, I kind of went back and I played basically the first golf course that, that you get. I think it's Brook. What, what's, what's the first golf course on this? I uh, can't remember the name. It's something. Is it Brook something? And I shot 15 under par. So it was a 57, 15 under par. And I actually missed a couple of putts. I could have been probably a lot better. Um, so... That was an easy course. My numbers were, were dialed in. I was putting the ball within, you know, like a, a kind of five foot bucket of the hole kind of thing. And I was really like solid and dialed in. So the difference between that and sawgrass, so, sawgrass is probably just like fast greens. Maybe slightly firm as well. Maybe maybe not firm, firm, but. Um, but that's where the difficulty of the golf club comes into effect. Is an easy course is basically just soft and sore greens. Uh, but a really difficult course. I mean, you can make a course a course almost impossible to score if you made it firm and uh, fast, like, like these greens are, because there's nothing. You can uh, your land distance and your your, car, your your carry distance and your actual end distance is so big that the, you'd have to aim. You'd have to land the ball off the green. And, and roll it up, and then you, you, you come into the effect where you can get bad bad lies, and the ball can bounce left, right, stop, come back. I mean, there's so many factors, and that's really where this game is is so effective. And I think, you know, I'll say it's impossible to, to play, but it's a lot more difficult to play because of that. And sawgrass is really just you've got to. You've got to gauge for that rollout distance on the, the, the fast greens. So, I mean, sometimes it might be more advantageous to lay up in a par 4. I know that sounds kind of stupid, but uh, but there's, there, there was plenty of, of distance on the greens. The greens were big. But you've got, you've got to be really precise with your shot and your rollout distance, which I think is really important. Um, so... That was my my basic yardages that that I took. And I did. I actually did soft. I think it was soft. Uh, soft greens, soft uh, speeds or slow speed, and then I did firm and max speed. And I've got the two. And really, what I've got is the sort of difference between the difference between land and on a soft green and a firm green, it does not much in it. Like a seven iron, 
there's only f uh, five yards. I say only five yards. That's that's quite a bit in, in, in a way. Um, a seven iron goes one six seven, whereas in firm and max speed greens it goes one seven two. So there's five yards of difference. Um, so that's all my, my yardage chart that I made. The most important thing about that is is your rollout distance. That is that's the key. Um, and then what I did, I took I took the four clubs, nine iron, pitching wedge, sand wedge, and a lob wedge. And what I did, I actually went above, below and above the with a short modifier. Now, if you go above, i.e. you start deal off in a club, it actually doesn't become as effective. Uh, you can actually hit like a lob wedge like over 200 yards when you deal off it, but all you're really doing is getting a lot more kind of roll distance out. But the most effective range is from a standard shot down, so you're adding loft to it. And what I did, I basically, there's how many steps? There's one, two, three, there's four full steps, and there's basically four half steps. So there's basically eight steps to a shot, right? I'm going to explain, I'll, I'll explain this. So let's take a, let's for instance take a pitching wedge, right? When you bring the short modifier up, you can actually see a, a grid system. Basically, what you've got is four lines, and then basically you can go half steps. So basically, I tried, I tried to map out how far that shot would hit, so that if I've got a number, say, I mean, here's here's just an example. Uh, if I want to hit a shot that is now, before you even start this, you can hit a, a pitch shot. Right, let's just try a full pitch. Right, now, this is 75 yards. Right, carry 75. Right, and it rolls out to 86. So that's 11 yards carry on firm. Don't forget it's firm and, and fast greens. So that went 70, so say I want to hit 75 yards, right, I've got a couple of options, when I, when I look at my grid, I've got a 9 iron that goes 74, we a kind of loft modification, I've got a pitching wedge that goes 72, with short modification, then I've got a sand wedge that goes 73, so I've got 70, 72, 73 and 74 yards that I can hit, so the 9 iron is a 74 yard shot, but it's a full shot, so I could probably be a bit more accurate. So let's go for that. Now remember, this is us hitting a 74 yard shot, and a, uh, a 75 yard shot. I want to, I want to hit it 75 yards. Now, with that, a uh, like pitch shot. There's a lot of roll distance on that, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like that shot as much. So what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to go, I'm going to go to my nine iron, and I'm going to go up three, one, two, three. This one's maybe a wee bit harder to get. I think is it just a bit there. You will see it. It'll go between quite above and below. It's hard to see with that. I think that's it there. Right, let's hit this. According to my book, it, this is going to go 74 carry. Right, but you see the most important thing there? It, it went 74 and it only carried another 4 yards. And the big important, the, the most important factor about that is, is the, the distance it went after it, it, it landed. It only went um, a couple of yards. And remember, that's in fast and firm greens. So we'll do that again. So see, let's just say, for instance, we've got a pitch. Right, a pitch at a wall wedge is 45 yards. Let's see how it, it reacts. 45. Let's see. 
So it carries 49, so it's, it's basically like carrying four yards there. So 45, now I could hit that, I could hit a 45 yard shot with a wall wedge, but hit it normal and put locked on it. So let's do this. Let's go wall wedge. Right, we're hitting it normal and we want to go 45 as another three, so that's right up at the, right up here. I get this perfect. It's hard to see this one. So let's go with that. Now this should go 45 yards. 45. But it screws back to 44. So it's it's just a different way of playing a shot. That shot might not be as effective on a green that you're playing to a slope. Any kind of slope down, that would catch and probably roll quite far. So you'd have to be careful of that, but that's the difference between the two shots. If you need to hit 45 yards, the pitch shot I don't think is always the best type of shot to hit. Because I think you get a bit more roll on it, and you've got to gauge for that. So you've really got to take just a bit off it, or add a bit of loft. But I think the full shots are more... They tend to stay more to the, the actual carry distance, which I think in scoring is absolutely a must. So that's the difference between a pitch and a full shot modified with the the, the yardage chart. And as I see, I've got I've got a whole array of numbers here. So as I see, if I want to hit it, if I want to hit it a certain yardage, or say sixty five yards, a pitching wedge can hit it sixty five, a nine iron can hit it sixty seven. Or 63. Uh, a sand wedge can go 66, uh, and a wall wedge can go 64. So basically, I'm going to get more spin in the 64 wall wedge, but with the nine iron carry, I'm not going to get as much. So let's just let's actually just take the nine iron and then go full because this is a full shot or high loft added. So there we go, nine iron, normal. Full shot, 100%. This should go 63 yards, and it's probably not going to bite as much. Well, there you go. Look. It bites a touch. So basically, on in fact, I'll, I'm just I'll, I'll do this as well. I'll show you how if you set this course up to your uh, Greg Norman course designer, I can change practically anything about that this course in a heartbeat. So. Let's go to way out. Now we can go to the greens, and I can basically say, right, I don't want them. I want the speed to be. Let's get it to half. It's a wee bit difficult to gauge. Right there. So the green speed's medium. And now let's go to firmness, and let's just have the same, like medium, medium firm, medium speed. Right. So that's it changed. And this is a great thing about setting this course up yourself. I mean, it's pretty easy to make. Um, you don't need to be an expert on it. So that's it. That's a green set. So let's go to our course. We need to edit holes and I'll just put that on there on the tee box. Go to play, play hole. Now these greens are now medium firm and medium speed. And we'll just do the same. Let's let's just hit. Let's we'll hit an eight iron. The mat, eight iron. It says one four five. I've got it here as being potential one four three, one four four, where one four eight uh, or a five yards roll out distance, which is one hundred forty eight yards. So let's hit this. And one four three. So I'm basically I can predict what I'm gonna hit, and that's just like a normal uh, distance. Let's see what the distance was with firm. Eight iron was one four four and one five six. So you're basically adding on eight yards a carry, eight yards more. So you're, 
actually getting 13 yards roll out instead of 5. So that's the difference between medium and firm. It's actually quite quite a lot and that's why when you when you play a course that's firm and or slightly firmer and also uh, like fast greens you've got to really compensate for your yardage book becomes totally different than what it is normal and that's why a lot of people hit shots and then just roll on forever. So let's go back. Let's go back and hit. Do we see what we got? Sand wedge. Flop shots are, are, are always good, but I mean a flop shot. I think for uh, what am I doing? And a uh, wrong way. Wall wedge. Now we buy it. So it's 30 yards. So let's actually just hit that. Right, 100% shot. 30 yards. And spins back. So quite good control. The lowest I can hit a full shot is 40 yards, and that's where a wall wedge. So your finesse shots for obviously your, 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 your wall wedge are, are different. But that's basically, and I've put these numbers up on my Facebook account, um, the numbers. But it's easy enough to do, you can just spend a bit of time, uh, make a, a test range like this. Uh, you don't need much skills in the way of uh, making courses, it's basically just making a big long strip of green. Uh, and you can basically get all your, your in-between shots on your shot modifier. And that's the most important thing, because... I kind of looked at it and said, you know, I'm hitting shots and I don't know what I'm, I'm guessing the distance. Whereas in, in actuality, a real pro golfer will know the number. If he's hitting a certain type of shot, he's going to know, oh, I can hit that 50 yards. So I've got a number. So I'll go to a pitching wedge and I'll hit it 81 yards. So let's go pitching wedge. This is, in fact, now let's go 90 because that's one and a half. Right, so pitching wedge, one, and there's the half. So I'm in between there. So this is going to go next. This is going to carry ninety. There you go, ninety yards, and stops ninety two. So the distance control on these shots is really nice. You know, all you, all you really got to do is, if you've got a number, and don't forget you have a lot of shots. Because there's a big gap between a pitching wedge and a sand wedge. There's like, what is this, seven? Uh, I think there's 120.95. So I think there's like 25 yards between your, your pitching wedge and your, your your sand wedge. And that's why you get things called gap wedges. Gap, gap wedges are actually made so that you don't have that big gap between it. So you'd have a club that maybe hit like 110 carry. And that would be nice between your your wedges, but I can hit it 109 yards with a pitching wedge, in fact I'll just demonstrate that just now, a pitching wedge and that's only, that's half, that's there, so that shot is 109 yards, you could actually finesse that and go, well that's 110, 111, 112, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and probably up so you can actually finesse it uh, but I know for instance that will go 109 let's just hit it there you go one oh, it went 107 into 108 uh, because it's a half step you're not going to be as accurate but it still works and I'll show you what I mean if you go to the box here and you just tap it up there, that's that's it, that's it full on. So that's a wall wedge, full that would be 64 yards. And this is just a big long strip of uh, a green. So you go 64 yards on the button, spins back to 64. So 
you could probably actually gauge how much you're going to spin as well, because obviously a wall wedge, the more you loft you put on it, the more spin you're going to get, so you need to adjust that if you're hitting it in a course. But basically this video is just to demonstrate uh, sort of the control. Fir firmness and the fast greens obviously means more roll, but for me, the, the thing that's really good about this, from what, 100 and 30 yards down to 40 yards, I've got numbers covered and I can do different types of clubs. So say if the green was 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 fast and the slope was maybe going from like, fr uh, back to front, so it's basically sloping down uh, back towards me. I don't want to hit in like a, a, a lob wedge. You know, if I, had, if I had to hit it, 63 with a full shot is is the kind of highest I can go, but if it was 83 yards then I'd probably go with a 9 iron and, and loft it up, and that way it's not going to bite as much, you're probably going to have more control on it. So basically that, that that's the video, um, I don't know whether to publish these, um, th th this test range, I'd have to set the, I'd have to maybe release like 3 and have like soft, uh, medium, and firm, and that would be like firm, fast, medium, uh, medium speeds, and then slow for people to use. So um, I might actually, I might actually put these up later today, and just put, just make it so that let to see. I'll go to my um, save and oh no, save and exit. And I might just r release three versions of it, and it'll basically just be club yardage test range, uh, soft, medium, firm. So I might do that. Uh, but I hope you found this kind of useful. It's just, it's just. I mean, I don't think it's any secret um, to to improve your game in the golf club. I still think playing difficult courses will always be more difficult. It's just the way it is. Um, it's more because I actually tried. I actually went out and played certain courses with a lot of yardages in my head and trying to work. But it's it's easy hitting to a number. But sometimes it just doesn't kind of it doesn't work like that. It's 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 one of those things where. You can go in with a lot of numbers, and sometimes you play bad because you're, you're hitting to numbers. And I know it sounds kind of daft, it should work out, but it doesn't. Sometimes you're better just with feel. Pure feel in this game is something that you can't buy. When it comes to putting and approach shots, driving off the tee is not as, as difficult. It's a, it's a little bit easier. But your approach play and your, your putting is where this game really can actually hit you right square in the, the in the goalies or you know you can get it and you can be on it and you can shoot well because the difference between shooting a good score especially on it in a, a really difficult course is, is knife edge stuff it's you walk a very fine line between playing well and playing really poor and that is such a fine fine line you know you can miss a putt by you could just Graze the whole edge, but that's a missed putt. And you do that five or six times, and you're in a whole heap of trouble. And then what happens is you try and play, you try and play a bit, a bit more aggressive. But sometimes that doesn't work; it just makes it worse. So it really is, it, it really is a, a good game. It can be quite humbling at times, uh, but that's just that's just hard courses. Hard courses are always going to be difficult. People are going to shoot good scores in a, in, a, in a really difficult course, but they've maybe played it X amount of times on that, that weather setting and and the, the, the pin select and they've got it down to a tee. I mean, when I play a course, I, I can't practice on it, but um, I don't really, it's not like, you know, I'm sort of playing it like, 10, 20, 30 times a day just to play well in a tournament I'm going to play that night. 
that that's not how I do it. I want to have a game that I can take onto a course and kind of roughly shoot well. I just need to say like 5, 8, 9, 10, 12 under par. Maybe just like par, 1 under. You know, keep it, keep it real. So anyway guys, I hope you found this video kind of useful. As I said, I have published these uh, numbers up on one of my websites. I am a Facebook page for this from my kind of digital sports player I think it's, it's called it's up in that so it should be in the, the, the wee box or somewhere on my, my uh, YouTube page so check that out but it's just it's just a handy kind of ready reckoner yardage book thing to have especially with those four clubs with a loft because when you get close to the hole there's a lot of opportunities to base with because any other club, you've got like sort of 10 yards of a difference kind of thing. So you can actually gauge well, putting a waft on, taking a waft off. But when you get into like what, what I would call the kind of kill zone of clubs, all those those numbers are really important to have, to hit to a certain number and to hit it more accurate than I think the pitch. The pitch shot is, I don't like the pitch shot as much, I would rather go to a full shot and land it in a little bit kind of higher uh, but that, that, that's just me, uh, everybody's different so anyway guys, hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you for more videos coming up soon bye